Father God in heaven, we love you and we thank you that your love is more than our sins. And because of that, you sent Jesus, your one and only son, to die on the cross for our sins. You, Jesus, came as the Lamb of God. You who knew no sin became our sin and you took our sin to the cross. We're so thankful. You died for us. You took the wrath upon yourself. You paid the price. And then you walked out of that grave on the third day. You rose from the dead and defeated the power of sin and death in our lives. You made us born again children of the living God. Our name's written in the book of life for eternity. We're so wonderfully thankful. So we pray this morning, Lord, as we come to you, that you would touch our hearts, bring your word, Lord, in to give us the hope and the joy that we need so that we can live for you, that we can be salt and light in this world to bring honor and glory to your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, it's so exciting for me um, to talk about what we're going to talk about today. We're going to, um, we're going to go into Psalm 139. And uh, we're going to focus on that. And I just, I just love reading and thinking about and letting the Holy Spirit just immerse us with the truth that is in Psalm 139. Because if we can understand, if, if we, we can't understand without the Holy Spirit, but if we will open our hearts and souls and let the Holy Spirit have his way with us and let the Holy Spirit bring the truth of, of Psalm 139 into our hearts, we will begin to, to touch and feel and be part of the reality of the of the sovereignty of God, the 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 providential hand that does work in our lives from eternity past to eternity future. So let me share the screen here for a minute, and we're going to go over the initially we're going to go over the attributes of God that we put together the the focus because if we can if we can comprehend as we comprehend meaning as the Holy Spirit brings his word as we comprehend more and more who God is all that God's done all that God is doing all that he's going to do and how it's really not what we do it's what we believe and what we trust in in other words do we trust by faith in God and who he is and what he tells us or do we try to create our own little idea of what eternity should be and what God should be and how we should interact with God and God keeps saying, he says, look, it, just do it my way. It'd be so much simpler if you would just trust me. If you would realize that you really are nothing, you came from nothing. And unless you turn to me, you, you've got yourself, you're in a major issue and a major problem. But because I love you and I created you, I have a plan for you. And I'd like you. To, and God says, I want you to seek me because I am the only God. I am the only way. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth. There's no other way the Father but through Jesus. So now for us, many of us here who have been Christians a long time, the, the, we've heard all these things and we, we know that we go, but then the world, this horizontal band of, of thinking of the spiritual darkness that we live in has a tendency to confuse us and, and it tempts us and we move in this direction or that direction. <clears throat> and Jesus said, what is it that keeps you from bearing fruit? What did Jesus say? He said that, the, the worries of this world, the desires for gain or for money or for power, those are the things that keep you and I from the, the, the plant of the seed, the God's word in us that keeps us from bearing fruit. It keeps you and I from being what Jesus said. Jesus keeps, to, he, he told us in, uh, over and over, but he told us in John 15, that unless you attach yourself and abide with him, he's the vine and we're the branches, you're not, you're not going to produce fruit. And if you don't produce fruit over a period of time and it comes and you're just not a fruit bearer, what's going to happen? The, the father's going to come along and he's going to, he prunes and he does all the things. And eventually that branch is taken off and thrown into the fire. Now, I'd be very candid with you. I, I can do everything I want, but I can't produce fruit. It's impossible for me to produce fruit. I can't do that. But God can produce fruit through me if I will focus on who he is. And when I focus on who God is, I'm focusing on Jesus Christ, because all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form in Jesus Christ. And when we look at God and we carefully examine what the word of God says, like John said in chapter one, Jesus is the living word and he became alive. He took on flesh. So here we are. We're going to look at these things. Now, let me pull up. Um, let me share the screen here for a minute and pull something up with you. There we go. Let me just read this to you real quickly, and then we're going to go into the passages. The, found, the foundation of all vertical truth, the great, all-powerful I am, the only true God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. The God of the Bible exists from eternity past to eternity future. Now, that is a major statement as it is. If, if you think about that, if you think about what it means for you and I to think about eternity past, no beginning, and eternity future, and no end. And all that that means and what God's got going there, what he wants us to think about. He says, now listen carefully. Let's talk about this together. God is holy and righteous in all of his being and purposes. God created all things. Everything that exists was created by God. God sustains and maintains everything always. God holds all things together, everything. God is in all things. All things are in God. God is in the midst of all that happens. God is sovereign in all things, always, always, always. He's always there, and he's always sovereign. His hand is always working. God is everywhere at all times, past, present, and future. God is working through all things, every situation and circumstance. This is just amazing. I, I read this, and it just fills my heart. God knows everything that will ever happen in advance from eternity past. God knows in advance every thought, every word, and every action of every created being. God is never surprised and is working in all things always. God is all-powerful. No person can stand against his good and perfect will. God is more than we can understand. God's ways are greater than our ways. God's thoughts are beyond comprehension without the aid of the Holy Spirit. God blesses those who fear him by trusting in his promises by faith. God loves sinners. God's love is made real. God's, God's love is made real by his mercy. It's very important what mercy is and grace in Christ. Let me make a quick moment, take a moment to just teach on mercy. That if God had not given us mercy, we would never be able to receive his grace. Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. And if we got what we deserve, we'd have been wiped out and sent to hell without even having a, a moment of the grace of God. And yet God, through his mercy, allows everyone to come and to have life and all the things they enjoy. And his grace is there ready to bless everyone, everyone. And it's always there, the grace and mercy that comes through Christ. So now let's go to the next one. God is Jesus Christ. This is very important. God is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is a major capital L. Lamb of God is a, has to be a, a sinless human being who lives without sin. So that when that individual, which is Jesus Christ, goes to the cross, that blood is innocent blood, and that is the blood that then can take upon itself our sin. So we go on further. It says, God is to be glorified, worshipped, thanked, and obeyed by all creation. God becomes our loving Father when we repent. Now, this word repent is a big deal. And uh, Psalm 32 talks about it, David, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But when we repent and believe on and in Jesus Christ, that is the essence of what it means to have the fear of the Lord is to repent. When you and I, no matter where we are, it says in the Bible that the creation, all the things that have happened, everything that they, you see, the skies the, and the, 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 the earth and all the things that are going on, what's really wonderful is that you think about that, is that that brings us to the point that God exists, he's there, and we begin to think about they, to repent of our sins, fighting against God, our creator. And we believe in Jesus Christ and we're there. It says the last uh, statement here, it says, God, as the Son, Jesus Christ, died for our sins on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day to defeat the power of sin and death in our lives and make us born again, children of the living God, our names written in the book of life for eternity. It's so wonderful to think about this. It's so wonderful to, to come to the understanding of what this means. So let me go um, a little further here and think about this for a minute. If you and I and by the way, I don't know what's happening with the computer. It seems like it's blinking on and off, but I'm going to continue. And if for some reason we lose connection and we're gone, I just know that I'm sitting here talking to myself. So there it went again. It's clicking off and on. So maybe we're having troubles with the internet. So here we go. Now let's think about this for a minute. 
We know we, we just read these attributes of God, and we want to think about that because if we can focus on who our God is each day and we can pray and we know that God is working, we'll have no trouble praying continuously. We'll have no trouble keeping God in the conversation with us. We'll have no trouble realizing that Jesus is with us all the time and we're with him. We'll have no trouble understanding that the Holy Spirit is in us and the power of God is there. We will be able to have, to, to have endurance, amazing endurance. Our faith will be stronger because we're focused on Christ. And we focus on Christ, the Holy Spirit will then empower us and we will move forward. And guess what? That's called abiding. That's called dwelling. Abide in me, dwell in me. And what happens? Fruit will bear, the fruit will come through that and your life will be different. So let's go on further here a little bit and let me pull up the, uh, the next uh, uh, thing that I have here for us. Here we go. Okay. Now, I want to read one, uh, Psalm 139 and then I want to talk to you about it. So let me see if I can get through it without stopping. That's pretty tough for me. Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up, you know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your... If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Now listen, you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Now, I want to go back to the beginning here, and I want to talk about this, but I, I have to say something right now that is so wonderful. We'll come back to it in a moment. Numbers, verse 17, listen, I'm going to say it again, and think about what this means. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. You know what that means? It means that in the complexity of everything that happens in your life and my life, that's a sovereign hand of God has dealt with every contingency everything just like as mitch is running off to the hospital it, it just is all the rest of uh, joe is is recovering from the COVID. It, it's just as as all the things that are happening all of this god's hand is there and he's in the midst of everything and he knows every everywhere and we're going to go through this what we know what we think what we what we say it says oh so lord you've examined my heart i love this in other words, God knows deep down inside who you are and what you're really thinking. And what's interesting to me as a Christian is, is I, over the years I've progressed by reading words, thinking about it, and the Holy Spirit is that how many times I had thoughts and things, and I was conceiving some sin, and I was over here doing something, or I had some, this was going on, or I was watching something or thinking about something, and the sin was rolling away in my mind, to, to, to come to the grips with the reality that God is within everything that rolls through my mind, everything that comes. He knew it before it was going to happen. He could have he could have punched my ticket and got me out of here before I could even do it. But he he allows me to live my life. And at the same time, he's he's there all powerful and sovereign in his providential hand is working in my life. 
and taking me from here to there to there to there to someday I'm going to be right where he wants me to be and he's going to bring me right up into the heaven. I'm going to leave this world and go to be with him and he's working in my life. Do you believe that? If you do, you can rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why? Because you know. You know that he is with you. He knows everything about you. In uh, Hebrews chapter 4, it talks about this. He examines the word of God comes and it penetrates to the deepest part of us. He knows exactly what's going on inside of us. Listen to this, verse 2. You know when I sit down and stand up, you know my thoughts even when I'm far away. He knows everything you do, everything you're going to do. He knows all your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking about doing. He's all aware of that. And he could stop you at any moment. But he allows us to live our lives because his sovereignty is set up in all the circumstances and situations, as it says in Romans chapter 8, that they're all working together for good because he loves, because we love him and we seek him. And that's the key. And, and now, and it says nobody can be against, nobody can keep him from doing what he wants to do. Oh, there's a lot, a lot of things that the evil ones against him, the demons, and a lot of people are against him, but they, they're, they don't mean anything. They, they can't do anything. There's nothing the devil's ever done or ever will do. That's a surprise to God. He already knew, he knew it before he, he even created him. He knew it. And, he, and, and how he, I don't, his sovereignty is beyond comprehension, obviously, but I love talking about it and thinking about it. Verse three, you see me when I travel and I, when I rest at home, okay? In other words, he, he, you can't go anywhere to hide from God. It says, you know everything I do. In other words, God knows everything you do, where you go. And it says, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. In other words, you can't even have, you, you can't say anything think anything or do anything that he doesn't know. He says, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand, and now listen carefully, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Do you believe that? You see, that's, that's the difference between someone who has God's blessing upon their lives, even though all these terrible things and super, you know, things are happening, you're still being blessed, but then there's people that all these things are happening and they're not being blessed. And what's the difference? Is that I know it, I trust him. And I know that my God is with me. And I, I know that I can live each day walking with him. And so he says, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge to, 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 to get this, to think about this, to comprehend. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. In other words, this, this, this message we have today, this thought we have today, I call it the, 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 the sovereign. Our, the, our God is so sovereign and his providential hand is working. You know, that's, that's an amazing combination. So basically, let's start back and, and let's finish up where we were. So as we talk about this and we think about what's going on, we think about the God. It says here, he knows everything we do. He knows, verse 4, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. It's amazing that the Holy Spirit, the idea that understanding that, that people say, well, see, when you become a Christian, and Ephesians talks about the minute that you become the Lord, and you go there, that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. But within the world, the Holy Spirit is at work all the time, always. And, and, he's, and it says the Bible that the Holy Spirit is out there touching everyone to, to bring them to this, to, to repentance, okay? to convict them of the sin so that everyone has an opportunity to respond to God. So it looks there, it says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. In other words, we're always in the presence of God. And we were talking about that in the attributes of God. We never leave his presence. It says, if I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength uh, will support me. I, I love this. It says, uh, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. In other words, there's no, he, he's, God is not restricted by anything, okay? And I was thinking that when I, when I was a young boy, I remember uh, I watched those movies, if you guys remember, of the, the submariners, and they were in the submarines in World War II, and in the bombs, you could see they, they set down those charges next to them and everything. I was thinking, if I was in one of those submarines, man, I would definitely be a Christian. I mean, I would definitely, because I would go to Psalm 139 and I would just sit, I would just say, okay, Lord, 
I'm in the bottom of the ocean. I'm in the ocean. And you said you would, you're, you're with me even in the bottom of the ocean. And I go to 139, I tell you, Psalm 139 would definitely be the, uh, the one for, the, for everybody to just. So if you're at the bottom of the ocean, it's awesome that God's with you. And if you, and this is so exciting to me, it says up in the, in the air in the height. Uh, I, I remember flying back from, uh, I told you this story from Hawaii one time. You know, that's, I forget how many hours flight that is, but it's quite a while. And we, we leave early in the morning, you fly back <clears throat> or, or night, and then you fly back, come early. And I remember I was so tired and it was almost the end of the flight. We'd been in the air for, I don't know, three or four hours. And, th and I went back to, in the bathroom and I was in the back there and I looked and I hadn't shaved and I just looked horrible. And I heard the sound of those engines going eh, like that. And I thought to myself, it came to my mind. I said, there's nothing that can go that fast for that long and stay together. I just, the thought came into my mind. And right away, Psalm 139 came into my, into my mind. It said, even if you're 34,000 feet in the air or you're walking on the moon, God's with you. You can't go anywhere where he's not going to be with you. And I, I was thinking about just these kinds of things. I know we got to close now and we're going to we're going to work on this next week. But this is so exciting to me to think about this, that the darkness can't even hide us. Now, let's talk about verse 13 for a minute. and Listen to this. It says you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. That means that God made us, he knows exactly what's happening in the womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in the utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Now listen, think about this for a minute, those little babies. And we think about the horror <clears throat> of abortion we think about the the terrible things that are happening now that 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 god it, it says it, it, it's like we're sacrificing our babies to the on the altar to the idol of convenience remember remember they they sacrificed the babies the israelites did back and they and to a ball and and to these 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 non-gods because they thought that they would get something for it and and the babies now are killed in the abortion, like giving them to the God of convenience because it's going to cost money, going to take mind. You hear people say, well, I'm just not ready. I'm just not ready to have a child. And so they abort the child because it's inconvenient. And we, we have to understand that, that this whole idea of worshiping who we are and what we want to do is an idol and not following God. It goes on further. It says this. Uh, thank you for making me so wonderful. He's making our bodies so wonderful. So think about all these children. I just saw a thing on the TV last night and been thinking about all these girls that are going out when they're so mixed up, when they're young, in puberty, they're coming in and they want to change themselves to boys. And they start, they go to these places without even a doctor uh, they're dealing with them. And these young girls are getting all these hormones to try to turn them into boys. And they don't even, and this idea that there's not, the boys aren't boys and girls aren't girls. And and that they can do these things and they're just destroying themselves, destroying themselves. It's just a, it's so tragic what's going on. He says, you know, our, t our children now, little, little kids in, in kindergarten, first grade now, all of a sudden, this whole idea is you can't say this is a boy, this is a girl. That we're not allowed to say, you know, just the reality of how God has made us, how wonderful he's made us. We need, we need to repent. We need to pray for our country. We need to stand up. We need to have courage to stand up in the face of, the, of these things that are taking place. These, 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 when it, when, remember what God says in Isaiah, he says, when they say that right is wrong and wrong is right, uh, sweet is sour and sour is sweet. In other words, when we say things that are just obviously not true, then we're really we're getting ourselves in real trouble. And look at this. And he says this, verse, um, let's see. He says, every moment, verse 16, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So he knows every step you're going to take, everything you're going to do for your entire life from eternity past. Just let that go into your mind for a while and think about how wonderful that is. That is your God. That is who loves you. That's who, who came and died on the cross for your sins. It says how precious, listen to this, how precious are your thoughts 
about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I, I, can't, I can't count them. Uh, they outnumber the grains of sand. And, and when I wake up, you're still with me. No matter where I'm at, you're always there. Think about this. The thoughts, the thoughts of God about you and about me, they're so vast. And think about what would happen for him to be sovereign in everything that happens in my life. Every circumstance and every situation, he'd have, he's working it for good and his providential hands working. The, the, the complexity of, of all that's going on is so awesome and so wonderful. Do you believe this? This is a big moment in my life, in your life. Do you believe what we just read? Do you believe what the word of God says? Do you believe that God is who he says he is? Because if you do, you can trust him. So you have to look at your life because later on, which I don't have in here, is, is the verses 23 and 24. And he says, search me, O God, know my heart and see if there's any anxious thoughts in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Why would he ask, why is it that, that having anxious thoughts would be something that we would need to confess to God as a sin? You see, because where, where you do business with God is where you have fear. Wherever you're fearful or anxious is where you do business with God. You either believe that God is God and he loves you and he's sovereign and he's working in your life, or you don't believe God's there and you don't believe he's sovereign and you don't believe he's working in your life. Because where fear comes upon you is where your faith is made real. Saving faith, the faith that brings you and I before the Father into heaven through Christ, Saving faith endures through all the problems of life because saving faith believes that God exists. Saving faith believes that God is at work. Saving faith believes that he's, he's there. He's sovereign. He's working. So we need to think about every day. How do we think? What are we thinking? What is it that what's going on? And then every time when our thinking varies from here to there, we just confess. Search me, O oh God, know my heart. And then just confess and say, Lord, you know, lead me on the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. That's why, and I'll close with this. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust the Lord with all your heart. And now listen, listen to what it says. And do not rely upon your own understanding, but acknowledge him. In other words, be aware of him and in and, and everything. Acknowledge him in everything, and he'll make your path straight. In other words, you have to understand that we think all kinds of things, but God's word is the path. It's the light. 119, it says, because our path in this world is dark. This is a dark world. This horizontal band is spiritual darkness. And the vertical truth of who God is comes and gives us this opportunity to walk the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, to bring honor and glory to the Lord. For it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is so exciting. So let's close with this. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this time, the disruption, and all the other things that took place. We pray that the guys, uh, that, that you bless each one of them as they think about you as they come before you to learn this and to worship you. We love you, Lord. We love you and we thank you. All the disruptions that come into our lives, that's the evil one trying to keep us from really understanding and listening. And Lord, we pray that you that the power of your word would live in our lives, that we would dwell in you and abide in you, that we'd be thankful people. We'd be men, of, men, of, men and women of prayer. And you, you'd bless us and you'd use us to bring honor and glory to your name today. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.